This is going to be my attempt to explain why certain Garmin GPS models route differently than others. And what I mean by route differently is this. Sometimes I will get comments saying, well, you know, I had an old Garmin that routed a certain way and I got used to it. But then I got a newer model and now it routes differently even though I'm going to the same place as I did before. What's going on with that? That is what I'm going to try to explain here. This is a 2457 LMT Nuvi model. I'm specifically picking this one because I get to show you everything. Well, pretty much everything that can affect how one of these things routes and what you can do to make it route like an older model. Now the first and obvious one here is the uh, navigation section and then the avoidances. Any one of these checked is going to affect how it routes and the uh, most of these are very easy to understand but it's this one in particular carpool lanes. Now in Texas where I am these are called HOV high occupancy vehicle lanes. When this is checked, sometimes, sometimes, this thing, not necessarily this model, but pretty much any model, will actively avoid certain parts of an interstate or a highway just because there's HOV lanes on it, even though I can totally go on that highway or interstate and not use them as free and clear to do so. If it knows there's HOVs there, sometimes it will route around it. It's not often that it happens, but it does affect it. So, there's that. The rest of them, fairly easy to understand. The next one is the custom avoidances here. If you have any, any custom avoidances, whether it's by area or by road or street, obviously this will affect how it routes. Because you've got to remember the earlier models 200 series, 300 series, and so on did not have any custom avoidances, but this does. The later ones. And sometimes it is very easy to forget if you have any programmed in there that you set that they are in fact there. And remember, you can if you do, you can go in here and disable and enable them or enable them at whim. So just remember that. This is another new one, newer one that was introduced later is environmental zones allow or avoid or ask. Now I always set mine to allow but if it's set to avoid, well yeah, that obviously will affect the route. There may be places that are classified that is, as environmental zones that you don't even know about that are in the map data so well, there's that. And that's it for navigation. This thing right here, and this is why I picked this model so I can show it to you. In traffic, now you know about the optimized route, whether you have it as automatic or on request, but then there's this, the traffic trends. Now, I haven't really explained this, not too much in detail in previous videos, but I will here. What is that? What does it do? Well, first of all, traffic trends is baked in to the map data. Whether you have traffic up here enabled or not. Yeah, right now it's not because I don't have a traffic cord plugged in. But let's just say I did. And this was disabled. That's still there. That's baked into the map data. And what it is, is that if there are certain parts where it knows that, I'll give you an example, morning commute hours. If there's a certain part of the highway that is known to have slower traffic historically at certain parts of the day, such as the morning commute rush, then with this enabled, it will try to route around it. And that is where some... Uh, perceived weirdness and routing will come in as in your perception of oh that's weird that's so different why is it doing that same thing with uh, midday lunch rush same thing with uh, evening commute 
what that basically means is this you could go to the same place with this thing you know you have a place saved in your favorites and such and literally depending on the time of the day even with traffic disabled but trends enabled it will take you on two different routes if it's say at some really early morning hour like four in the morning oh sure it'll take you the way that you know but then come seven a.m yeah seven o'clock or eight a.m something like that it will take you a different way because the trends are enabled and by disabling that trends thing it will uh, get to more of a a route that you remember from older models now we'll, we'll get back to this in a second and the final thing here is what maps do you have installed now in this particular model it's just country data United States Canada and Mexico on other models you will have Foursquare, Parkopedia, 3D Buildings, and so on and so forth. Does this affect how it routes? Mm-hmm. Yes. So if you want this to route like an older model, you could disable those other maps and just have the country data alone. And that should get it back to routing in a way that you're familiar with. Now, let's get back to that traffic trend stuff. Okay, right. Here, in this model... Oh, wait, nope, one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing I gotta mention. Is the calculation type. Now, I'll get to the trends in just a second. In this particular model, we have four methods of a route calculation. Faster time, shorter distance, less fuel, and off-road. You either have depending on model most of them will only have three or two if it's three then you have faster time shorter distance and off-road if it's two then you just have faster time and off-road that's it but this is an eco route thing the less fuel whether you have eco route enabled or not and what is it exactly think of it as like the combination of faster time and shorter distance it's like a hybrid of sorts is it really useful? Well, it depends where you are. I'm not saying you have to have it. You don't. But if you wanted to know what it is, that's what it is. Okay. That out of the way. Now let's get back to the traffic trends. Right. On this model, as you see, there is a checkbox. I can disable it on this one. On newer models, however, no. It's baked in forever so you're like, oh no does that mean that even if i disable traffic it's going to use that historical data that's baked into the map data that will alter routes to what i consider to be a weird or different thing yes yes now like on my drive smart 66 which is a current new model at the time i record this I don't believe there's any way to disable the traffic trends. I don't think. Either it's you can't disable it at all, or it's buried in another menu I have not found yet. If I do, if I do, I'll post a community post about it, and I'll say, okay, oh, it's over here if you want to disable it. But until I do, if I don't, then I couldn't find it. Um, yeah, th it's baked into the map directly to the data image itself for the map data it's there right so what that means is that it will always take you on the, what you consider to be an oddball route or a weird route just that's the way it is is it defeatable even with that yes and this is i i mentioned this in a previous video is using uh does the video is called does a garmin learn as you drive that's one of my previous videos if you purposely take a specific way to get to a, a saved destination i want to repeat that so it really sinks in a saved destination as in something from where to and uh, favorites or saved it the unit over time will learn your preferred route 
and you can that's how you defeat it it's not instant you have to travel back and forth to that saved location a few times how many times i don't know but then it will learn as you drive and then it will safely ignore the traffic trends after a while that's my assumption i don't know if that's actually true but what is true is that i know that it will learn as you drive at least for newer models when you go to save locations your way a handful of times again don't know how many so okay that's it that's all the stuff that can affect how this thing routes um, I believe yeah I believe I covered it all so hopefully that gives you a better idea of how this thing calculates A to B